Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a partial differential equation. An easy kind. That's why I'm solving it. Otherwise, I wouldn't, right? If it was hard. If you have some examples that are good, like a little difficult maybe, you can also give uh, write a comment or just share with us any way you want. I'll, I'd be more than happy to make a video. If you have an interesting problem, please share. So we have this partial differential equations which are known as PDEs, but this is kind of like an easy kind which I'll talk about, why it's easy to solve. But million dollar question is, can we find all possible solutions? That's very hard to do with partial differential equations. Unlike ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations are very, very hard to solve. And in some cases there are, I mean, we can't solve them, right? You can only approximate or use numerical methods because with ordinary differential equations, we end up with constants, right? Because of integrating. With partial differential equations, constants are functions. And we don't even know what functions they are, right? Okay, great. But this one is kind of interesting because we have a function u, by the way. u is a function of x and y, a function of two variables. That's what makes this a partial differential equation. And we know that the partial derivative of u with respect to y and x are the same thing. How is that possible? It's kind of hard to do, right? Try to guess. Can it be something like e to the power x multiplied by cosine y? You can try different, some, uh, you know, possibilities and you'll be very much surprised because sometimes you just hit a solution, um, which is something we can also talk about at the end if I don't forget, okay? So anyways, here's what we're going to do. We're going to treat the solution as a separable solution. What does that mean? It means that u as a function of x and y can be written as the product of a function of x and a function of y. So I'm going to call them f of x and g of y. This means that f of x does not contain any y in it. It's function of only x. And g of y is a, only a function of y. Does that make sense? That way it's separable. For example, this could be x, this could be y, and u would be x, y. But do you think x, y satisfies this equation? Good question. You can check it out. And you'll find out. Let me not tell you. Okay. So, let's go ahead and try this approach. And of course, we're supposed to use the given equation. So, let's go ahead and differentiate u with respect to y. What does that mean? It means that you're going to treat x as a constant. So, this is a constant. So, it's going to stay. You're only going to differentiate y, which is g prime of y. Easy, right? What about the derivative of u with respect to x only? That's also easy. You're just going to switch roles and it's going to look like this. Now, we want these two things to be equal. How nice. And notice that this is going to turn into something super duper nice. Why? I'll tell you. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can set these equal to each other, which is going to give us something super duper interesting. Okay, f of x multiplied by g prime of y equals g of y multiplied by f prime of x. Beautiful. Now, we want to go ahead and put the same variables on the same side because that would only make sense, right? So let's go ahead and uh, put the y's together. g prime y divided by g of y equals f prime of x divided by f of x. Beautiful. Well, beautiful, but at the same time, kind of problematic because g prime of y is a function of y. Of course, g is differentiable, f is differentiable, and the derivatives are also functions of the same variable because we only have a single variable, right? These are not partial derivatives, by the way. That's why I use the prime notation. So we have a function of y equals a function of x. Function of y does not contain x. Function of x does not contain y. So we have to have something that doesn't contain x and that doesn't contain y. That can only happen. You're like, why? <laughs> because it can only happen if you have a constant. You get that? Because a constant is a function of any variable, so it would satisfy both. And this gives us a beautiful, beautiful equation. Actually, two equations, two ordinary differential equations. So we can kind of write this as g prime of y equals g c, which is a constant, by the way. This is a constant. I can't emphasize that enough. Not like a constant function, but it's a constant. And then f prime of x equals c times f of x. We're going to be solving each of these, but guess what? The solutions are similar, very similar. So if you look at one of these, let's just solve the second one. F prime is CF. How do you solve it? Let's put them on the same side. C, F prime minus CF is equal to zero. So F has to be something like e to the power mx, right? 
because that, that's what it is. And guess what? That gives you the characteristic equation because if you differentiate f, you get that and plug it in, you're gonna get something like this. And take out e to the mx, which cannot be zero. You're gonna get the value of m from here, which is c. By the way, c is kind of like a known constant. If you were given initial values, or what's the other word I forgot? There's another word for initial values, but anyways, you get the idea. We would be able to find the value of c numerically. In this case, we're, it's just gonna be a c. So m is c, which means f of x can be written as e to the power cx. By the same token, g of y can be written as e to the power, wait a minute, is it cy or another constant y? It's actually cy. You'll, you'll probably use something like e to the ky first for g, but then after differentiating, you're gonna find that k is equal to c, so that gives us this. But well, wait a minute, did we solve this problem? Yes, of course, because remember, u, not u, the variable u, was made up of, made up of two pieces, which is a product of two functions, one of which is f of x, which is a function of g, I mean x, and the other one being a function of y only. So since u is f times g, now we can go ahead and plug it in, substitute, and that's gonna give us the solution for u, which is e to the power cx times e to the power cy. But wait a minute, we can go ahead and combine these things because when you multiply these two exponentials, you're gonna add the exponents and that's gonna give us e to the power c times x plus c times y, which you can also factor out if you want, like you wanna go be fancy, c times x plus y. Now, one thing that's pretty interesting, maybe not that interesting, but sort of interesting, is if c is zero, we get u of x, y equals e to the power of zero, which is one. So one is actually a solution because any constant is a solution, by the way. The reason being, if you differentiate a constant with respect to any variable, you always get zero and zero equals zero. Remember, the original problem was derivative uh, partial of u with respect to y and partial of u with respect to x were equal. And yes, this is satisfied by that. What about e to the power x plus y? Yes, it does work as well because if you differentiate e to the power x plus y with respect to y, you're gonna write the same thing, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of x plus y with respect to y, it's just gonna be one plus zero, which is one. And then of course, on the other hand, you're gonna get e to the power y plus x times one or x plus y times one, same idea, right? So they're gonna be called, cool. yes. This is indeed a solution, but again, it's only one of the solutions up to a constant, right? So this is like a more general solution, but does this represent all solutions? That's a million dollar question, and guess what? I'm gonna answer it for free. No, I'm not asking for a million dollars. I mean, if you wanna donate or if you wanted to gift, be my guest, definitely, I would be more than happy, like I would be ecstatic, but uh, you know, I'm not just, uh, I'm providing it for you guys. Okay, here we go. So if you use x plus y, it's also gonna work because if you look at the partial derivatives, you get one and one. So this also works, but why didn't we come up with that? Because this is not a separable solution. You can't separate x and y like a product, right? And let's go ahead and check. This is the best part, my favorite. Check results from Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve a problem like this? Come on, this is very easy, right? It's AI or machine learning, whatever you wanna call that, right? Ta-da-da-da, and the bubble burst. You can't, unfortunately, because it's too hard. And it's probably gonna to be too hard for many, many years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus BI, my other channel that focuses on complex numbers. And bye-bye.